Yay! Hi. Hi. I was waving <laughs> to you, but I didn't know how else to get oh, you. Oh, sorry. I know. Honestly, I, I'm saying this is going to be the thing. It's like every show I've done, it's not like I haven't done these before, and every single time I'm like, I'm just trying to get them live. My Wi-Fi's not working. I'm just trying oh. to move away from the sun a little bit. There we go. <laughs> no, I look a bit shiny, so I'll join you there anyway. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And yourself? Good. Yeah, good, thank you. I am good today. Um, listen, right, we better get started because I was a bit delayed. So welcome, everybody. I'm so excited today because I'm joined by a very, very special guest, a friend of Albright's and all-round inspiration, Colonel Dane Kelly Holmes. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, I, uh, you're going to be able to post questions and I will answer as many, I'll ask, not answer, I'll ask as many as I can um, at the end. So please just send them through. Um, now, I'm sure most of you know um, Dame Kelly, but I'll just do a little overview of who she is and her achievements to date. Um, double Olympic champion Dame Kelly Holmes, MBE, is respected throughout the world as a role model and an inspiration setting and still holding the british records in the 800 meter and 1000 meter kelly's an olympic commonwealth and european champion and after her olympic success she won bbc sports personality of the year european world athlete of the year and was honored with a damehood from the queen at 18 kelly left professional running to pursue her first dream to be in the british army but she could never shift the dream of olympic gold that she'd had since she was a child the rest is history, but it was a very tough journey to get there. Her running career was plagued with injury and disappointment. Recurring physical injuries contributed to periods of clinical depression and self-harm that continued to affect her just one year before her Olympic double win. And in 2008, Kelly set up the Dame Kelly Homes Trust, the charity that works with world-class athletes to help guide disadvantaged young people to get their lives back on track. Kelly, you are an absolute inspiration. We've spoken a few times before, and actually I, I did say to you earlier, if I go through your um, all your history, I could be at this for a good sort of the whole afternoon, basically. So I thought I'd give a quick praise to you because um, we're here today to talk about positive mindset. Now, um, since lockdown, as well as all of those things, you're also doing a live fitness class every morning. Um, and I just want to say that that backward plank is an absolute <laughs> killer. And I need a positive <laughs> mindset to be able to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> <'Cause I'm still laughs> like, oh. I was determined this morning, but it nearly killed me. Um, mm. So uh, apart from the uh, hardcore fitness classes, how are you dealing with lockdown yourself? Uh, hi, everyone. Um, well, to be honest, I'm quite... I'm, I'm feeling I'm getting the hang of it now. I was actually in New York when all this really kicked off and I was there when Broadway shut down and then suddenly you know, everything, was still, everything else was open and I was still going to restaurants and then suddenly we were getting word that we've got to kind of get home because you're going to get the last flight home and it all sort of went a bit mad. And I think that initial shock that everyone felt was the same with me because suddenly jobs were getting cancelled. You know, I do live big events on stage at conferences and outdoor events and they were either getting cancelled or postponed. And then you were just like, OK, so what's going on? And I think it was a little bit of a, yeah, just that shock period of this is like a movie. I still feels a little bit like a movie, to be honest. Yeah. Because you've been in it, of course. But um, yeah, so and then... It was, I'm, I feel like I'm, yeah, getting the hang of what I've kind of structured for myself. And actually, I'm quite enjoying being at home, to be honest. I know, I, I'm, not, I'm hardly ever home, so this has been like a miracle. Yeah, hanging out with the llamas. <laughs> oh, yeah, the alpaca boys, yes. Alpacas, I go live alpacas. with them every morning at eight o'clock, and that's given some people a bit of, you know, kind of breathing time and calm because they are very strange animals. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love the thought of that. That's brilliant. Um, and so, okay, so your normal routine has totally changed. Have you set yes. up a new, a new routine? During lockdown. Yeah, definitely. I think that was really important and very important for people that they give themselves a structure. So I decided that one, obviously I'm into fitness, but my main aim is to motivate and inspire people to be sort of the best version of themselves, whatever that means in their mindset and in their body. So I decided that if I could have a structure that would give me a sense of 
almost go into work, but also that my brain would be engaged in what I'm going to do in the here and now. Because I think it's very, I think a lot of people when this came are almost like worried about the future, what's going to happen. And we're all in very different positions, uh, you know, not knowing about financially or job or what's going to happen, come up. But I decided that if I could do a Monday to Friday plan and literally write down what I'm doing at each stage of that day, that would give me focus. So I started to do that. And that's really helped me because, you know, normally my brain is, I'm running around everywhere. I'm on a plane, train, in a car, going from one meeting to a conference to a fitness event. And I'm used to being busy. And I'm not good at doing nothing. That really does my head in. And I don't want to get to the point where I'm in isolation or as in I'm locked down and in my brain too much, which then turns into a negative of what am I doing? What can I do? So I changed my mind to go, do you know what? I'm going to have a plan. I'm going to structure it. And I'm going to engage with people, which makes me get out. So me doing, for, for example, the 8 a.m., the 8.30 call and the 7 p.m., I know that I've got to be there. Yeah. I've got to be smiling. I've got to be on it. <laughs> and it helps well, me. talking really while does. you're doing all of your routine. This morning, I was like, I cannot believe she can talk throughout this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm, I tell you why. Uh, not just because it's working out. But what I'm finding is I'm connecting with so many different people who have either just started their fitness regime, really into it and didn't really know what to do. So it's kind of given them a focus. And you start to see people who are coming in regularly. And uh, we've got a little joke on some of them about my back plank. And everyone's going, no, not the back plank. And I'm going, as soon as you say, I'm bringing it in. And it's just become a, a laugh. And I feel that through this process, I'm not taking myself seriously at all. But I would deliver something good to people so they get a benefit, but also we have a laugh and I really enjoy it. So you put some structure in, but did you have a transition period to plan that? Or did you just go, right, we're in lockdown. This is my new structure. So how, how can we go about it? Because some people have sort of continued almost as before, but from their homes. So they're doing Zoom calls, they're doing you know, mm. meetings effectively, and it's very structured. Other people still haven't really got a structure and are kind of wondering and perhaps feeling a little bit aimless and a little bit lost. Mm. What's the best way of, of, of tackling that? Well, I would say that you possibly need to think about the here and now a little bit more because we can be really, we can switch our brain very much and it is a switch to negative and positive. And, and that goes all walks of our life. But I think in this situation, if we think about the here and now, and if this was, let's say, because we, we don't know what's down the line. We have no idea. There's no timeline given to us on this. So if, let's say, you were in your life and you go, okay, this is my life now for the next month. This is my norm. And this is how I switch my brain. That if this is now my norm, what am I going to do that one, keeps me motivated, keeps me happy, keeps me positive. And I look at all the things that may be, so I turned it around, let's an example. So not being at home much, my house is a dump. <laughs> Each room has got that. things that needs to be done. And I thought to myself, you know what, maybe I should use this time wisely. <laughs> and I kind of don't put it in like I'm doing a whole day because that would drive me stupid. I put like 30 minutes in that room, 30 minutes in here. And I've done that. So I've plotted that. And I thought, right, I can control that right now because I can do it. And then obviously my fitness, but I'm able to do that anyway. I then decided that. Um, Again, so many people could be doing more things that they've always wanted to do. So if they wanted to keep fit, everybody is delivering online free fitness at the moment. This is your time to grab all those people and go, thank you very much. Um, also, uh, we get one chance to go out and exercise a day. Now, for anybody that has not got a garden, I'm very privileged, you've got a lovely garden, but if you're in a flat or you've got a communal area, Get out and use that 
time really wisely. Go for a walk, go, go on a bike, go for a jog, do something. Of course, it's within the government guidelines and do it with one person only that's in your household or on your own. But um, use that wisely because, do you know what? I really appreciated my run yesterday morning. I was hearing the birds and, and this morning when I was doing the alpacas. They were like singing like I was in an aviary, like seriously. And I was just appreciating the time because now we have been given that privilege to do that thing. Whereas when you're running around all over, unless you're into fitness and it's part of your lifestyle, you probably neglect your well-being and, you know, being out in the environment and keeping active. So for me, I'm just accepting the here and now and changing my mindset to do what I can do right now and then what I can do tomorrow and the next day, but taking it one day at a time. So almost thinking about small wins, because I think one mm. of the things is there's almost a lot of, there's a big to-do list, because a lot of people are kind of going, make your home look better, you know, <laughs> that cupboard you've always, start baking, uh, <laughs> you know, finish that book. But Little bit. What you're <laughs> saying is just choose the things that you can do, small things. And, mm. and, and obviously you feel very strongly about the link between physical health and mental health but mm. what if you're somebody who just doesn't normally do physical fitness as part of their routine what what can we do to add that as part of our routine well i think it's been it has been proven that keeping active has a really good positive effect on your mental well-being uh, that's for various re reasons obviously uh, adrenaline the endorphins um, getting out and doing something for yourself. And I think when you talk about fitness, why, why do people keep fit? And there's all different reasons. Of course, there can be some gym bunnies like me that have done it literally all my life and, you know, kind of love it. But also, I think for people that look at themselves and think, oh, do you know what? I don't like the way I look. I'm not healthy generally. Um, you know, I'm out of breath a bit more than I normally am. All of these reasons are actually... We know why fitness is important from a physical point of view. People get men mental health and mental well-being, as we know, it can affect one in four people in society. And that's probably just proven people diagnose. That means that so many more of us are either hit with something like anxiety or stress, but don't relate that to a real mental health problem, because actually there's that education and understanding that's needed around mental health and what those really mean and what de being depressed means. But the link between physical activity and feeling good about you is so strong, because I'm telling you, if you go out, and especially right now, and it doesn't matter where you are, there's no pollution, there's a lot less human beings around, and you can go out and have you time, where you can reflect, where you can think some positive attitudes. And I, I, there's one thing I've been bringing into um, this little routine is having a work called Pat. So I say to people, have Pat on your shoulder. It can be a man or a woman, doesn't matter. And Pat stands a positive attitude today. So I wake up with Pat or I have positive attitude time when I'm actually thinking a bit like, oh, do you know what? Because I, I go through that as well. I have to say, you know, I am a positive person. I have a positive attitude. But some days I question, am I giving too much of myself and you think to yourself for your future, where's the return? And there is something like that sometimes because in my world, you know, I interact, I, like I say, I stand on stage, companies book me to go and talk. And yeah. you want to feel like you're giving the best bits of you. So I have like this bit where in my head, I might doubt what I'm doing now. Am I doing it in the right way to approach, you know, what I'm trying to do? So I pat and I go, oh, God, flick, flick, flick the switch, positive attitude. And I think something about myself that I like, that I do well. And that I know that makes me happy. And if I can do those three things at some stage during the day, it really lifts me. I absolutely love that because it's quite simple, but just something that we need to practice. I yeah. suppose. And also, I'm quite interested in this whole, um, there's lots of discussion at the moment about gratitude. You know, so thinking about what you feel grateful for and that being, a, being positive. Is that something that you do? Obviously, you're thinking about you know, yourself and, and what you've done well. But what about this notion of gratitude? Is that important as part of our sort of daily ritual? Oh, absolutely. I think, again, we all need to find some of those things that we are 
content with, what we really makes us feel good and makes us feel happy. And that is, it could be very, very small, or it could be the largest things that you've done and achieved or want. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like, especially at this time, sometimes we need to look around ourselves and appreciate what we have done and where we've got to, like right now. So we talk about the here and now. Look at your life, you know. Are you ill right now? Are you in hospital right now? special this coronavirus have you got your life and have you got your health and that's one thing i'm grateful for because there's so many people suffering out there right at this minute mm -hmm. so i'm very grateful to be in this position that i can be talking to you and be healthy and not like some of the families that are, are devastated right at this moment so i look at that and i think that's a simple thing to be grateful for but i am really grateful and then i look at um the interaction that we're having, you know, the opportunity to speak to you now. This is kind of, I'm seeing human person, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading some of the comments and seeing that and it's just a lovely way of uh, seeing people's appreciation of what you do. And connection's really important. One of the things that I am really grateful for, actually, and you can take the way social media and this in a good or a bad way. I've tried to take it into a really positive way. I've had Zoom conferences, calls, and if anyone doesn't know about Zoom, look it up. It's the easiest way of connecting with your friends and family vis visually and doing whatever you would love to do with them right now. So I've had quiz nights. I've had G and T nights. I've had my, my sister's birthday on night. I'm, I'm seeing my friends and family visually more than I ever do. And I'm really grateful for that. And so to find things, all these little things that have now come into our lives that maybe we didn't do before or recognize, we just text somebody, you know, it's a quick, hi, how are you doing? I'm now having time and talking to people. I love it. The, the other thing that I've been saying to people is, you know, if you are having a low point it might just be a low day it might be a low point in the day actually I think using those groups to sort of say you know what I'm not feeling that great today yeah. um, is, is actually what I found anyway is that people are much, being much more open and also being a bit more helpful and a bit more sort of discursive about well I'm also having a bad day here's some things that I've tried and I, I think mm -hmm. it, it feels like people are being a bit more open and honest as well as doing the kind of quiz nights and G&Ts and so on which yeah. I yeah, I think you're right. I think this is a time where you can actually connect with people in a in a, a different manner. So the other thing with mental health, two things that actually help your mental health. One is exercise and one is talking, talk therapy, they call it. So being able to open up, express how you feel um, and trying to be as and not being honest as you can. Do you know what? Because I always say there's always at least one person in every single person's life who, if you didn't say you were struggling to, would go, you know I would have always been there for you. And I remember this, when I um, first came out with my own mental health problems, I wrote it in my autobiography. I mean, not a place for your friends, your family to read it. And one of the things that really struck stuck with me over the years because that wasn't just a one-off occasion in 2003 when I became self-harm and depressed what happened was is that the feedback well feedback sounds really weird um my friends and family were so upset and I thought they were mad with me and what they said is they said never ever suffer on your own again because you know we're always here and then when my mum passed away in 2017 I really suffered badly with bereavement. And this is another thing that people don't seem to talk enough about. And I really believe you should. I, there's no timeline for bereavement. And I really, I was suffering quite badly. And the one thing that kept ringing in my ears is that I've got to call my friends. And I've got to. And my friends literally got on the phone, came round. And it was the best thing ever. Because even though I couldn't go out the house for three weeks, I didn't want to see anyone. I was crying every day, constantly. When they come round, I'd just have a little bit of a laugh and a little bit of a smile. Mm -hmm. And just that knowing they were there for me was so important. And I think during this time, do not feel alone. You know, it's so easy for people to feel 
isolated right now, especially if you're own, and even if you're just with your family, you know, because you don't normally live with your family 24 <laughs> seven. And I'm sure, <laughs> oh, oh boy. <laughs> Everyone's having their moments, that's for sure. I'm sure everyone's having their moments. But you know what? There's still, on a very serious note, there's still, um, there's a lot of charities out there that have a really, a lot of helplines. Please use those if you're struggling in any way. Please contact them because they are still there 24-7 for you uh, and you won't be alone. And, but just remember the first thing we said about friends and family are there. And if you can do this sort of conversation, even with your best mate, you know, you can cry, you can laugh because your best mate's your best mate. You know, take them into your heart and, you, and, and really be with them at this time. Such great advice. And there are loads of places for people who are really having a tough time. Yeah. Friends and family, definitely. All Back Connect, there's a whole community there. Um, I'm a UN Women UK ambassador, and they've just started something called Everyday Allyship, which is basically putting mm -hmm. all the kind of resources that we've got access to, but we might not know about in one place. So that's another mm. um, resource which might be helpful. Yeah. Um, so talk to us a bit about you're feeling um, positive or you're not having a great day. Talk to me before about this kind of moment of calm and taking something. You talked about your pats. What about your moment of calm? What, what's your ritual for that? So that we've had a bit of a crazy day on Zoom all day <laughs> or trying to homeschool or trying to, you know, go and buy shopping for vulnerable people, whatever it may be. How do we find a bit of space for ourselves and what advice have you got? Well, I have a daily ritual every single night without fail i do what i call is me time so i'll have my hot bubble bath i'll have my candles on and my music playlist and i literally switch off from the world i love it like seriously even if before this if i'm coming at midnight i'll go in my bath because it's a time where i reflect i breathe i i i just think of me instead of all the million things that are in my head. And I think even in this time, everybody should, even though like either you're on your own or you're with your family, still take that time to do something that's only for you. So mm -hmm. something that you wouldn't normally do. So if it's a meditation app, if it's reading, if it's going for that walk on your own only, even if it's not even with a dog, you know, go into that space where you've got music, where you feel that at that period of time, your name counts you know you are you because we live our own life and too often we are living our life with and for other people because we're helping them we're supporting them we're talking to them but this me time is mine and i'm actually running out of tunes now so if anyone can send me this <laughs> I've been doing this for months. <laughs> and I have to literally, I've probably take half an hour before I've got in my bath to find the right songs to put up. Oh, I, love that. I love that. But also, I love the fact that that's your thing, that, that's your moment to, to switch yeah. off. Quite often, people, you know, they take that me time, they go and sort of lie down, and then their brain starts whirring like crazy. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, it's habits, isn't it? It's forming habits and taking yeah. that space for yourself, which I think is really hard at the moment when everybody is crammed in, particularly if they're living in flats and, you know, it, it's difficult, but you can always lock the bathroom door. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can lock the bathroom door. But, you know, you don't have to be that. It could be any. It literally can be anything where you just take that time only on your own. If you're normally always watching telly, turn it off. If you're normally always on your phone, turn it off for 15 minutes. I'm bad at that. Um, you know, if it's just something that you just would love to normally just to do, and but you just don't think of it as part of it being for you because we go through again our days quite robotic you know we just kind of do it we just you know and uh, instead of actually thinking about why we're doing it how we're doing it how we feel about it and maybe sometimes we just need to have that self reflection uh, on there well that's really interesting because I've, um, I've got a couple of questions that have just come through here and, and it's a nice segue into one which is do you ever take time to self reflect what uh, what do you do when you need to hit the reset button and, and do you ever need to? Yes, I do, believe it or not. <laughs> um, yeah, I do. Um, with a back plank, probably knowing you. Say again? <laughs> with a back plank, knowing you. <laughs> of course. Yeah, push them out. <laughs> um, no, do you know what? Uh, so when I'm on stage and I'm talking, I always say to people that it's important that you look at things you've achieved in the past when things are 
not going as well for you, or you've got that brick wall, that moment of self-doubt, I believe everybody at some stage during their journey in their life has had that yes moment, you know, the pat on the back, like kind of uh, moment. And I call it like, come on, you know, I'm really kind of moving, thinking, oh yeah. Um, everyone has had that in the past. And I think sometimes you have to look back and go, do you know what, what am I, what, what am I pleased with? What am I happy with? What made me feel good? And where did I feel in my life I've achieved? Because it's so easy when we're trying to move through life to be better and better and better, which we all are. Let's face it. We don't, you know, most of us want to still achieve in life something good where we feel like, oh, I'm really happy with. But when you hit those brick walls, take time. You know, you don't have to be changing things all the time. You don't have to be on a high all the time. You won't be on a high all the time and you won't be on a low all the time, but sometimes you'll be on both. And during each of those times, make the most of what that means. So when you're on the low, look back, reflect, look at who you are, what you are, where you're going, where you want to go, but also just take that time to be you. And when you're on a high, max out that you know, when you're, when you're <laughs> high, like honestly I, I sometimes i get myself so kind of like right come on let's go i have to hold myself back you know <laughs> but we can all have that but that is a bit about mindset self uh, determination resilience in terms of going through um downs and lows and lows you just keep going keep going because it is always a light at the end of the tunnel and you know, taking some positive affirmations for yourself, writing down things that are good in your life, uh, positive mindset words. And like I said, Pat, just have Pat with you a little bit more sometimes. And even if that's just a part of your day where you go, this is positive attitude time, that's a time where you do something, you know you're good at it, and you know you really will smile by doing it, even if that's the shortest period of time. Or if not, and you want to be on a high, wake up with Pat and just go for it in your day. As long as you've structured out what your day is going to be the day before. Because I think that's what happens. You know, sometimes I come down and I think, God, what am I going to do? And I remember I've had conversations with so many people that I've got to call them, call them, not written it down. Suddenly my head is going like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? So now, <laughs> the night before, I'm like literally writing like paper diary. I love it. Paper diary. Nothing but a bit of paper. Yeah, absolutely advice. right another question this is um do you have any specific tips for young people at home who might have difficult home situations and no access to the internet well you know what this is a really difficult difficult one um look it's hard to give this advice really because i'm not really sure who's asking but if you a young person on this now and you need support if you've got neighbors uh that you can contact or if you have a phone then you really please you need to do that you know sometimes sometimes you have to be brave um and to take a moment that you know if you're not in the right situation you've got to do something about that and that, that means going to a neighbor go to a neighbor don't really care that we're on this lockdown you can knock on their door stand two meters away and tell them you need help that's one thing and i'm only giving that advice because i don't know where that question is coming from um if it's about you being at home bored um kind of like you know there's nothing good you're in a flat you've got no outdoor space be creative you know um start to learn to draw to write to write poems to sing uh play instruments on kind of uh, saucepans and tins and be more creative because it might make you feel differently about things when you go to school or when you interact with your friends that you've actually learned something new great advice i love it um how do you get out of the habit of constantly comparing yourself to others Oh, never, never, never do that. Like, honestly, I know it's so hard in this world where social media is so in your face, literally. Um, <laughs> I mean that, like, we, we can't get away from it unless we're just literally going to turn off our phone um, or even the TV. Um, now, I always say that it's really good to be inspired by people to see what they've done that motivates you, that gives you kind of ideas, that makes you feel like, oh God, I'd love to do that. But you can't compare yourself to anyone because you've not been on their journey. 
you don't know where they necessarily started, how they got to the point where they've got to. Um, you don't know the highs and the lows of in that. But what you can do is go, you want to be as good as or better than them. Because you, what's, what's good about seeing someone that's been successful is you know you can achieve it. You know, it's like anything. When you see somebody that's done really well or you're perceived really well, because again, it depends on what, what who you think some, you're trying to compare yourself to. But I always think to myself that you should look at what somebody else has done. You can take advice from them. You can copy some of the things they've done. You can learn by them, absolutely. But then have that one bit that is you, like that unique piece of you. You know, who are you? What's your name? Why, if this goes really well, are you going to stand out amongst the crowd? Because the people that do well stand out amongst the crowd. Mm -hmm. They're not followers. They're not being the same as somebody else. And that's why I think you should always look to be just your individual. You know, I always say to myself, um, there was a thing when I was younger. Uh, so I grew up in Kent. So I live uh, born in Kent. And my mum was white. Um, I had white siblings, white stepdad, went to all white school. And I remember when Boney M came out and uh, it's a brown girl in the ring. And guess who was the brown girl in the ring? And I was like dancing. And I thought, and back then I didn't really know about bullying or anything. So in my head, I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm special. You know, I'm like, I'm the one in the middle. So I'm singing the cha la 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 la. And do you know what? When I first then realized that people, people or young people could be nasty or, you know, kind of judge you, I just thought, you know what? No, I'm not necessarily different. I'm unique. And I kind of changed my wording to think, no. I'm going to be who I want to be, stand out amongst the crowd. So when Sebastian Coe won the 1500 metres at the Olympic Games in 1984, he was a man winning the 1500 metres. I was running 1500 metres. What that meant to me is it's possible for a British person to win an Olympic title. And so I looked at him as my role model in terms of where I wanted to go, but I was never going to be Sebastian Coe. And I think that's what people should think. So take the elements. It's one of those specific things that you are looking at that someone else is doing or behaving like or have got or, you know, their job or whatever it may be. And think yeah. like, it's that because to your point, nobody understands fully someone's life you know, everything, all the different elements of their life. And so, and also social media just tells its own uh, unique story, I would say. It really does, you know, I mean, some great things about looking at people because it can give you ideas and it can inspire you. You know, I've met so many people even when I've come to Albright. You know, when I came to the awards the other day, I was blown away by people's achievements. You know, I would never have had the chance to even see who they were. And you'd look at them and think, wow, you're pretty good. And then you, you look at yourself and you just think, have I done as much? And then somebody else, if I said, oh my God, I don't think I've done anything like that, they'd be going, you're crazy. You, know? <laughs> you can be inspired by people and it can make your mind change to think, oh, actually, I quite like a little bit of that or try it out. But you shouldn't have to want to be that person. Oh, amazing. Amazing advice. Okay, so we've got Pat's. We need to do that. Yes. We need to look me at time. Others, me time, compare ourselves to others, but only if it's going to be a catalyst for change. Yes. Take time to form habits, new habits every day. Take time to exercise, physical and mental health. Somebody said here, um, any advice for self-motivation for home fitness? And I think um, we've sort of covered that, but basically just do something. So even if you just do five minutes the first day, you might be doing... 25 minutes within a couple of weeks or you might not you might carry on doing that five minutes but that actually makes a difference um yeah and try sorry just a quick one try something new all the time as well because you'll actually find something you like the thing is with fitness is we're not all the same we all enjoy different things so there's so much online at the moment that you can follow on youtube just try something out and i swear one one of the times you try something you go oh, oh hello i like that yeah 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 there's so many different things i try i was doing boxing ye yesterday which was uh, <laughs> Which was, which was fun. Um, awesome. <laughs> and someone has said, just before I finish, someone has said, um, is your fitness on your Instagram? It is, and it's 8.30 every morning, isn't it, on your live? Yeah, so I've got 8.30 in the morning, um, core and uh, abs, and then I've got uh, 7 o'clock, so 7 o'clock tonight, I have a 
hit legs workout. So if you want to really be busted, oh. um, come and join that. <laughs> oh, oh, might do, might give myself a break and do that tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kelly. It's always an absolute pleasure. There are comments that are flying through here. I think everyone has really, really enjoyed it. Thank you Thank so you. much. And make sure um, you tune in again on Instagram Live tomorrow at 3, not 3.30, where my co-founder, Debbie Wasco, is in conversation with Julia Samuel, MBE. And they're going to explore um, how we can learn to adapt and thrive during our most difficult and transformative experiences. Um, do get in touch if there are other themes that you would like us to explore. Um, and if you miss any of the events, they are up on um, Instagram, on stories, and you can also find them on Albright Connect. Um, so brilliant. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I've got lots of ideas now for the back of that talk. So um, enjoy the awesome. sunny afternoon behind you there. And it's through <laughs> yes, I know. You can hear the birds still. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and thank you all and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thanks everybody. And thanks, Anna. Bye. Thank you. See you again soon. Bye. Bye.